Hey, these divers, ready for a wild ride? Today, we're going deep into the world of AI, specifically efficient diffusion models. Really fascinating stuff. It's changing how we think about AI's creative potential, you know? Absolutely. We're talking generating realistic images, videos, 3D models, all from like simple text prompts. We've got our hands on some really cutting edge research and we're gonna break it all down. It's about more than just cool visuals though. This has the potential to revolutionize fields from medicine to product design. It's big. Okay, so let's unpack this. First things first, what exactly are these diffusion models? Imagine, uh, imagine you have this stunning photo, right? And you start adding like digital static to it. Slowly, the image gets lost in the noise until it's completely gone. That's the first step. Okay, Wendy. The magic happens when you train an AI to reverse that process. Starting with pure noise and guided by your prompts, it slowly removes that noise step by step to generate something totally new. So instead of paint or clay, this AI is manipulating digital noise to create. And it's not just 2D images we're talking about. This research mentions applying this to videos, 3D models, even designing new proteins. It's really mind-blowing, isn't it? And the results are incredible. We're talking some of the most realistic AI-generated content we've ever seen. But the real game-changer here is the efficient part. Right, because traditionally these models need a ridiculous amount of data and computing power, right? Exactly. They were incredibly resource-intensive. But now imagine shrinking a supercomputer down to the size of your phone. Making that power available to, well, everyone, that's a game changer. Absolutely. In fact, there's this algorithm mentioned in the research, SnapFusion. It can generate images on a smartphone in under two seconds. Whoa, that's insane. That speed and accessibility is huge. But how are researchers achieving this? The research keeps mentioning the architecture of these models. What does that even mean? It's like looking under the hood, understanding how it all works. We've got things like VAEs, variational autoencoders. Think of them as really smart compression algorithms. Okay, so like zipping a file on your computer. Exactly. They shrink down the images without losing essential information. And then there are the powerhouses, neural networks like Unet and Transformers. I've heard of Transformers. They're like the hot topic in AI right now. For good reason. Mm. They're revolutionizing how we approach AI. UNET has this U-shaped structure that processes information at different levels of detail, refining the creation with each step. And transformers are like the masters of relationships, mm -hmm. right? They don't just spit out random pixels. They understand how things connect. Exactly. They're learning how things relate to each other, like words in a sentence, but for images and video. And some research suggests they're the key to even more realistic and complex AI creations. So we're talking photorealistic videos from just a few lines of text, or virtual worlds that react to your every move. We're entering the future, folks. But how do researchers even start to teach these models new tricks without starting from scratch every time? Ah, well, that's where fine tuning and personalization come in. Instead of retraining a whole new model, they can adapt the existing ones. Imagine giving an artist new brushes and paints instead of making them relearn how to paint from scratch. Work smarter, not harder, <laughs> right? Even for AI. Precisely. Yeah. And the research mentions this really cool technique called Green Booth, which lets you personalize these models. So imagine teaching an AI to generate pictures of your dog in different scenarios just by showing it a few pictures. That's wild. But it sounds incredibly computationally intensive. How are researchers making these models actually usable for the average person? That's where the efficient in efficient diffusion models really comes into play. The research we're looking at actually dedicates a whole section to the latest advancements in efficient sampling and inference. Okay, breaking it down, we're talking about the techniques used to actually create the final images or videos from these models, right? Exactly. It's not just about training the model efficiently, but also ensuring it can generate those outputs quickly and without needing a supercomputer. Right, because not everyone has a server farm in their basement, so how are they doing that? Yeah. The research mentioned something called SDE solvers, stochastic differential equation solvers, which just sounds intimidatingly complex. It is complex, but in simple terms, they're finding much more efficient ways to uh, navigate the complex mathematical landscape of these diffusion models. Okay, so remember that analogy of adding and removing noise to an image. Right, so SDE solvers are like finding smarter, faster ways to remove that noise and reveal the final image, but with fewer steps. So it's all about optimization, making that process as streamlined as possible. And then there's this other technique, knowledge distillation. What's that all about? It's a fascinating approach where you essentially take a large, complex AI model and teach a smaller, simpler model 
to mimic its behavior. So you create these mini me AI models mm -hmm. that are just as capable, but way more efficient. That's brilliant. But with all this talk about the tech, let's talk about the real world uses. These models could revolutionize creative fields, but how are they actually being used today? Now that's where it gets really exciting. The applications are exploding right now. I mean, it's clear these models have the potential to change, well, everything creative, but what about right now? What are some concrete examples? We're already seeing applications in art and design, obviously, but it goes way beyond that. This tech is being used in medicine, engineering, you name it. Okay, so let's dive into some specifics. Imagine a world where anyone can create stunning visuals, compose music, design in 3D, all with AI-powered tools. We're talking about a creativity revolution. Absolutely. We're already seeing user-friendly AI tools popping up that make these capabilities accessible to almost anyone. Platforms like, uh, like Comfy UI or Automatic La 111's SD Web UI are making it surprisingly easy to experiment with AI image generation. You don't even need a tech background to get started. That's really cool. It's democratizing creativity giving everyone access to these powerful tools. And what about those who might not want to get their hands dirty with the technical stuff? What about tech companies? What's their role in all this? We're seeing a lot of tech companies offering these AI models as cloud services. So you can tap into the latest AI power without needing to own a supercomputer. Makes sense. So anyone can use these advanced models without breaking the bank on hardware. Hmm. Smart. The research mentioned some really cool applications for these cloud-based AI services. What were some of the highlights? Well, we're seeing them being used for generating all sorts of things. Custom artwork, marketing materials, even product recommendations tailored to specific users. It's like having a whole team of AI creatives at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about generating pretty pictures and catchy slogans, right? What about more practical applications? The paper highlighted some really interesting use cases in fields like medicine. Right. In medicine, these models are being used to enhance medical images, which can be hugely beneficial for diagnosis. They're also being used to personalize treatment plans and even aid in drug discovery. Wow, so we're talking about AI with the potential to not just entertain us, but to actually improve, even save lives. That's yeah, pretty huh? remarkable. But even with all these advancements, I imagine there are still challenges. The research mentioned some hurdles, especially with running these complex models on everyday devices like smartphones. Yeah, that's a big one. One of the main challenges is figuring out how to reduce the memory footprint and the computational demands of these models so they can run smoothly on less powerful devices. Because not everyone is walking around with the latest, greatest smartphone, right? Exactly. So researchers are looking at things like model compression techniques and specialized algorithms to make these models more efficient. So it's like finding that delicate balance between capability and accessibility. You want these models to be powerful, but also lightweight enough to run on everyday devices. Exactly. It's a constant push and pull, but that's what makes this field so exciting. We're constantly pushing those boundaries, always striving to make these powerful tools available to everyone. And the research highlights some really promising advancements on that front. It seems like we're getting closer every day to having AI that's both incredibly capable and widely accessible. That's really encouraging. So to wrap things up, we've talked about the incredible potential of these efficient diffusion models, the challenges researchers are facing, and the amazing applications that are already emerging. But one thing that really stood out to me from the research is this concept of preference optimization. It sounds like it goes beyond just teaching AI to do something correctly. It's about shaping its taste, its aesthetic sensibilities. It's a really fascinating area. Traditionally, we've focused on training AI to minimize errors to get to that single right answer. But with preference optimization, we're moving beyond simple right and wrong and teaching AI to understand and even mimic human preferences, which are often subjective and nuanced. So instead of just creating technically perfect outputs, these models are learning to create things that are aesthetically pleasing, emotionally resonant, or aligned with specific artistic styles. Exactly. And to achieve that, researchers are using techniques like reward models that can actually learn to evaluate outputs based on how humans perceive them. Imagine an AI that's constantly learning from feedback, refining its understanding of what makes a good painting, a catchy melody, or an engaging story. It's like giving AI a crash course in art appreciation, but on a massive scale. And I imagine this idea of preference optimization goes hand in hand with personalized training, where AI models are customized to cater to specific individuals or groups. Absolutely. It's like the difference between mass-produced clothing and a tailored suit. 
With personalized training, you're creating an AI that understands and creates in a way that aligns with your specific needs, preferences, and goals. The research highlighted some amazing examples of this, like the dream move technique, where you can teach an AI to generate images of your pet in different scenarios just by showing it a few pictures. It's like having your own personal AI artist who knows exactly what you like. That's really incredible. It seems like we're on the verge of a future where AI isn't just a tool, but a creative collaborator, a partner in exploring new ideas and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. But with all this talk of personalization and preference, I have to wonder, are we losing something in all of this? I mean, if AI is creating art based on our preferences, our existing tastes, are we risking getting stuck in an echo chamber of our own biases? It's a valid concern for sure. If we're not careful, AI could end up just reinforcing our existing biases, limiting creativity instead of expanding it. That's why it's so crucial to have diverse voices involved in developing and training these models and to make sure the data sets are as inclusive and representative as possible. It's like anything else, garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Right? So ensuring that the input is diverse and representative is crucial, but it's also about being mindful of how we use these tools, mm -hmm. about actively seeking out different perspectives and challenging our own assumptions. Absolutely. It's about using AI to push us creatively, to help us see the world in new ways, not just to replicate what we already know and like. And I think that's where the true potential of this technology lies. It's about that spark of the unknown, the unexpected, mm -hmm. that AI can help us uncover. Because ultimately, creativity isn't just about replicating what we know, it's about exploring the unknown, pushing boundaries, and discovering new forms of expression. Mm. And AI can be an incredible tool in that journey of discovery. Couldn't agree more. It's an exciting time to be exploring the intersection of AI and creativity. And I, for one, can't wait to see what the future holds. Me neither. Well, Deep Divers, we've covered a lot of ground today. From the technical nuts and bolts of diffusion models to the mind-blowing implications they hold for the future of creativity and beyond. It's been quite a journey. It really has. And I hope this deep dive has left you feeling as inspired and intrigued by the possibilities of AI as we are. If you want to learn more about anything we talked about today, check out the show notes for links to the research and all the cool stuff we discussed. And as always, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. Until next time, keep those minds curious.